super excited for all of you guys and ladies, most of you guys are ladies, um, who are here with me tonight live, so I appreciate that. So let's get started. Where are you getting your clients currently from? Getting them from social media, friends and family. Where do your clients come from today? So what I want to know, first question is, where are you getting your clients today? So, right? Where else are you guys getting your clients today? Okay, while you guys are writing that, the next question is, Wherever you're getting your clients from, are you consistently able to get them? Meaning consistently, month over month over month over month over month, you're able to get clients. Okay, so question number two, is it consistently working for you? And now what I want you guys to do is I want you to say, think COVID aside. Some of you jumped and have started your business during COVID, but I, you know, I don't want you to say, well, it's because of COVID. I want you to think COVID aside, the, the answers to these questions, all right? So the third question is, and I probably know the answer if you said no and you're not getting clients, but let's say you are getting clients from your family and friends and it's sort of consistently working for you. Can you, you grow it? Meaning if you do more of a thing, can you get more clients? It's also referred to, can you scale it? Can you scale the thing that you're doing today to get more clients, all right? And my suspect is if you said no to the first two, then the answer to the third question is no, right? So, all right, so nothing's been working. So unfortunately, you guys are not in a space where you've got clients and they're coming in regularly and you can grow it and you can, all right? So for the rest of uh, the other people, no, you can't, right? And that's unfortunately where most of you all are is, is that you, you um, don't have a, a consistent way to get clients and if you do have a way to get clients, it's not scalable, right? You can't repeat it over and over and over again and grow it to the size that you want, right? Let me, let me just tell you this one statistic, right? Businesses fail not because their idea is bad or their business is a bad idea. They fail because nobody knows that they're there right? Nobody, they don't have enough clients. They don't have enough cash to, to operate. That's why businesses fail. So your problem that you all are saying no to is a problem that you have to solve if you want to stay in business. Does that make sense? Like if you want to stay in business post COVID when the floodgates open, because I really do believe that the floodgates are going to open once we have a vaccine and people have a significant amount of pent-up energy and are ready to travel. I mean, even, uh, even I, I went to Cancun in November. If you guys, any of you guys caught my live in November, I went to Cancun in November and the flight was full, going and coming. Even though the resort wasn't like at maximum, but the flight to Cancun, every seat was filled, even during COVID, right? So for those countries that are allowing Americans to come in, Americans are taking advantage of it. So it's not that people are not traveling, right? They're just not traveling at the volume and in, in every location. But certainly for the Caribbean, if you want to book travel, there's an ability for you to do that now. And even, I, mean, I don't know that I go anywhere in the United States right now, but certainly in the Caribbean. So that being said, floodgates are going to open it up, right? And are you positioned to get clients, right? So when the floodgates open up and you don't have any way to get clients today, when the floodgates open, you're not going to have any way to get clients tomorrow. And if you're relying on friends and family to do that now, it's the same friends and family that you're going to have when the floodgates are open, right? And if it's not consistently getting you business when COVID is not our issue, you're still going to have the same issue. So we need to solve this for you guys now. Do you guys agree? Like, do you agree that we need to solve the fact that you are not getting clients consistently and cannot grow that model? Right, so before we jump into today's, let me introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner. I am your online travel boss, We're talking all things launching, operating, and marketing and mindset for a successful and profitable travel business. I am so excited to be here and coming to you live. And so for those who have joined me live, thank you for joining me live. Those that catch it in the replay, do not forget to push hashtag replay so that I know that you are here. We have a lot to talk about 
today. So super glad to be here. So again, my name is Sunday Gardner and I'm super glad that you are here live with me. All right. So before we jump into how and where you should be looking for clients, let's talk about what a good prospective client looks like, right? And so from your perspective, what does a good client look like to you? What is your ideal client look like? Somebody type in, uh, miss my braids. That's right. I took my braids out. So uh, in uh, it's been about two weeks now. I think it's been about two weeks. I took my braids out. And so I was like, you know what? I haven't like gone uh, braid free in about a year and a half now. And so it was time. Uh, uh, let's talk about what you believe is your, what makes a good client. I would suspect that someone that has uh, was traveling before COVID, all right? So I'm going to suspect that you probably don't know what makes a good client, right? You've jumped into this business and the core of your business, you don't understand. Referring other potential clients, that's a good one, right? Clients that is not always price comparing or penny picking, right? That's right, that's right. But let's, okay, let me... Let me make this a little bit easier for you and let's talk about the three characteristics that make the perfect client for you. And we'll dive into some of this more, you know, granular items that make it, but there are three major characteristics that make someone a good client for you. One is they have a need and desire for your services, right? They want your services or they recognize that they want, they need your services, right? Those who are, are travelers, not tourists, I, I don't know that I, do, I agree with that, right? I don't care if somebody is a tourist. As long as they need a travel advocate, I don't care. I could, I could, uh, I could give them a great experience as a tourist, right? I act so touristy when I go, right? I'm snapping pictures, you know, I've got my camera around, I've got my selfie stick. I'm pretty much obnoxious tourist when I travel. I try not to be too loud, like I try not to be the American tourist, but I'm very much a tourist when I travel, right? I'm either in my room, eat, I'm at a, a bar, um, or at a restaurant, or I am like out and about trying to absorb the experience of the thing, right? Uh, the experience of the location that we're in, right? So the number one thing that makes somebody a good prospective client is they they understand they need and desire the services that you provide, right? They need and understand, or they desire, right? So it's somebody who wants to go out of the country to Mexico, if that's your specialty, right? I've got a new client and her specialty is South Africa and she wants to specialize in wine, art, and um, food, right? That's kind of the area of uh, specialty that she wants to, right? So her ideal client will be somebody who's interested in wine, who has a desire to experience wine in different locations, art, and food in different locations, right? So the number one uh, characteristic of a good potential client is somebody that needs and desires, either needs or desires what it is that you are offering, right? Right, so someone put someone that needs help determining where to go during COVID, self-booking can be confusing during these times. You know, let's be very clear, self-booking in, in a COVID situation, not having an advocate, is not only confusing, it's risky, right? It's risky to get your family out of the country and in the event that something happens, how do you get home, right? You call the 1-800 number from Expedia.com, good luck with that, right? Right, so us as an advocate during this pandemic and even post-pandemic will be critical and people will need that. We'll need our services, right? So number one is they need and or desire what it is that we have to offer. The problem with most of you all is that you don't know what it is that you offer. It's not just travel, right? So we're going to dive into that in a second. Number two thing that makes a good client or a prospective client is they want a solution to what they need and desire. Does that make sense? Like they know that they need a travel agent and they, but they don't, they don't want to do it, right? That's not a good client. A good client is somebody who wants to go to Aruba, they want an amazing experience, they know they need an advocate, and they don't want to be their own advocate. 
They're not going to give it to their sister-in-law to go figure it out. They want a professional to do it. They want somebody to solve their problem. Does that make sense? Right? They want a solution. Does that hopefully make sense? So number three is they are willing to pay for the solution, willing and able to pay. So there's a difference, right? Some people are willing, but they're not able to pay. Some people are able, but they don't want to pay, right? So those are the three characteristics that make an ideal client. And you guys don't even really, are, are not even going after that, right? You're just kind of out there. You're like, I sell travel, right? But you don't know what need or desire your clients want, right? You're going after people, friends and family, who don't necessarily want an advocate, they want a hookup, right? So that's not what you are. You're not a hookup. You're an advocate, right? You provide experiences that no other person in your niche is going to do it like you, right? You have a unique selling proposition, but you're not positioning yourself in that. So those three characteristics are important when we move into the next thing, right? So number one important thing for you to understand when you get into any business, particularly the travel business, is you need to understand your client. You need to understand what it is that they want or what they uh, need, right? So if you're in a particular specialty, right? I'm going to pick Disney. It's not my specialty. I don't know nothing about Disney, but it's an easy one, right? Well, let me pick another one, right? Wedding destinations, right? Sandra specializes in wedding destinations. And what is it that they need and desire from somebody who specializes in wedding destinations? Somebody who understands venues, right? Somebody who understands the destinations and options for having an amazing wedding, not in their hometown, right? So that's a need. That's a desire. They want to have an incredible wedding experience and they know that they don't know. They want, they want someone else to solve it for them. They don't want to plan it. Maybe they want to plan it, but they don't know how to plan it. They don't know what they're doing and they're willing to pay for it, right? Most brides, even bridezillas, are willing to pay for somebody to cater to them so that they can have the exact thing and experience that they want in their wedding, right? So those three characteristics are important to understand. What is it that your client needs or wants from you as a service provider, knowing that they want to solve the problem and that they're willing and able to pay for it, right? If you've got those three things, you've got a great prospective client. Now, it's great if they also refer people, right? That's also great. It's great if they, uh, you know, they do all these other things that you're doing, but those three characteristics are the most important. So then now that you know what it is about your client that you're looking for, let's answer this question. Do you know why you're the solution, right? Do you know why you are the bomb.com and are the person who's uniquely qualified to solve your prospective client solution? If you don't know your unique selling position, how is your clients or your prospective clients supposed to know that, right? So many of you guys jump into becoming a business owner. You don't know who your clients are. You don't know what they need or want, right? You don't know if they're willing or able to pay. You're throwing up to your friends and family and you don't understand why you are the bomb.com. And it's not just because you've got the superpower, right? There are a lot of people that have superpowers and don't know how to use them. So it's important that you understand and can articulate when asked why you are the solution to your prospective client's needs, right? You need to understand why you are the solution. So here's some of the things that you need that help you understand why you are the solution. Don't be a generalist. Don't try and sell all types of travel to every single body. Specialize in something, right? Those of you that tell me that you have a niche, and when I ask you what your niche is and you tell me cruise travel, that's not a niche. That's an area of travel. When you tell me that you specialize in the Caribbean, that's just a destination. I don't know anything about your clients. You don't know anything about them. You don't know anything about how you uniquely help people who love the Caribbean, right? What about you is different than the Caribbean's RS or whatever website I can go find that talks all about the Caribbean. What is unique about you and why are you the go-to person for that solution? Make sense, right? You need to know that better than anyone else needs to know it. And you need to be able to articulate it quickly and soundly when asked by your prospective clients, right? All right, number two way that you know that you're the solution is, is that you got to ask yourself, what are you doing now today to ensure 
that you are the go-to person? Are you doing anything to position yourself as the go-to person in your niche? Right? Are you guys doing anything? Are you doing anything special to position yourself? Are you showing up in the places that you're trying to get clients, right? Um, as the go-to person. Many of you are not, right? So you, you're not doing anything special to put yourself in the, the, the limelight of the go-to person for your ideal client, right? Some people are putting, they go to webinars for training. That's great. Enhancing knowledge, right? Is that general knowledge or specific knowledge? to your niche, right? If you don't have a specialty and you're going to training, what are you getting trained about? Are you getting trained about what is your training around? How does it make you a better solution provider in your niche, right? That's the type of training that you want to focus on. You want to focus on training that's going to position you to get in front of the people that need you, are willing to pay and able to pay for you and want a solution that you provide, right? That's the kind of training you should be investing in right now. Okay, so then the next thing is, is are you worth being the go-to person? Are you worth paying extra? And all of y'all better say, hell yeah, I am. Yeah, I am worth it. Absolutely, freaking lily, I'm worth it, right? But you're not doing anything to act like you're worth it. You're giving away your services for free. You're desperate in your uh, marketing. You're not doing anything that makes you any different than Expedia.com or Travelocity.com or any of these other dot coms. Or frankly, your your competitors, right? You're worth it, but you're not charging for it. You're not positioning yourself for it. You're not talking about how much you're worth it, and you're not doing anything that makes people realize that you're worth it, right? And so what I will tell you is everybody's posting packages on their homepage, right? That doesn't make you an expert in your niche, right? Everybody's posting the same packages on their homepage. That doesn't set you apart, right? Many of you are posting stuff on your business page. That's not even getting seen, right? Because Facebook, unless you're paying for those boosts, your business page posts are not even getting seen by anybody. 10% of the population on your business page is even seeing your posts if you're not boosting them. So here's the thing. You're looking for clients in all the wrong places. You're doing all the wrong things that are going to get you in front of your ideal client. So let's talk about what you should be doing. All right, you guys ready? All right, so the last thing that I want to talk to you about before we jump into the actual process is what are your traffic sources? Like, where are you looking for clients, right? Many of you said you're looking for them through, or you're getting clients through your friends and family. So you're looking to them to help save you and market your business for you. You're not doing anything to actively market your own business. And that's your job as a business owner. Your number one job is to market and sell your business, right? That There's nobody else's job. It's not your friends and family. It's not your client's job. It's your job, right? You want to be a profitable, successful business. You invest dollars in marketing and selling, right? You invest dollars in gaining knowledge on how to market and sell if you don't know how to. Or you hire people to market and sell for you. But there's significant amount of dollars focused in that area so that you can grow, right? If you don't know what your traffic source is, then how do you get in front of your ideal client? Right. So some of you guys, right, COVID's happened. You don't have a way to physically network. Maybe you are doing, you know, local events and you were doing that, probably not doing that as much as you were before. So the question becomes, what are you doing now? Other groups, people are going into other Facebook groups, right? Some people are doing ads. Great. Those are great traffic sources, right? And so it's it's really important that you understand where your traffic is and where you're going to get it. So I always say you have two options before you when it comes to traffic. You can pay for it or you can go and get it for free, right? So some free methods of getting traffic is to go into other people's group. You know, I always say don't go into other people's group and start posting randomly, not providing value. That is a horrible way to market your business, right? Nobody likes it. Nobody enjoys it, right? So there's strategic, organic ways that you can grow your business or you can pay for the traffic. I choose to pay for traffic all day long, right? It's easy. Uh, <laughs> it's cheaper, less headache. I can do it on autopilot, right? But organic ways are good, right? So if you don't have a lot of money to invest in 
uh, paid ads, then you go organic, right? But just do it strategically, right? So some of these things that you guys are putting here is great ideas for traffic sources, right? But still, if you are running ads and you don't have your ideal client identified, your ads are going to be effective, right? So you can have a great traffic source with the wrong message. Does that make sense? Right. If you don't have the right message to the people that you are targeting, they're going to totally miss it. Do you know how many, like if you look in Facebook, because that, that's a traffic source that I teach right now. Look at Facebook. It's like every third item that's in your news feed relates to an ad. It's a sponsored ad. So that every third, do you know how much competition that is, right? Two billion people are on the platform every single month, right? And if you are not speaking immediately in your imagery, your videos, your titles, your content to your ideal client, they are scrolling by you, right? So if you're running ads and you're not getting results, it's probably because you don't understand your audience, right? There's a whole myriad of different things. You're probably not running the right type of ad. You're boosting ads and wondering why you can't get uh, leads, right? There's all sorts of nuances when it comes to Facebook ads that you need to understand in order to effectively get the results that you want, right? And most people don't know that out of the gate, right? I had to get years of training to get to where I am in the Facebook space. And most people need to do that too because Facebook changes its stuff pretty much weekly. Right. OK, so traffic is an important thing. Right. So now we've talked about three major areas. Right. We've talked about our client, what makes an ideal client. We've talked about ourselves. Right. What makes us a, an ideal solution? And then where do we get our traffic? So all of that leads to a client attraction system, which is what you guys are probably missing. All the people who told me no. You're relying on friends and family. You're looking to the wrong places to get your clients. And then you don't know your clients. And then you don't know your unique selling proposition, right? All of that tells me that you don't have a system, a client attraction system. So let's talk about what that system looks like. Are you guys ready? And this is the last thing I got to talk to you about before I, I, I get out of here. So the solution to your problem is to get a systemized way to attract and convert clients, right? It's not an accident. You don't accidentally, I mean, you may accidentally get clients, but you can't consistently accidentally get clients. Does that make sense? Like you have to have a systematic way to get clients attracted to you, strangers on autopilot, you can, or organically where you're putting foot to the pavement and you're doing that. Does that make sense to everybody? Like I need to get some feedback before I jump into the system. Right. You need a systemized way to attract strangers to your business and convert them to clients. Right. And that's referred to as a client attraction system. Does that make sense to everyone? Is this helpful to you? Right. So before it makes sense, is it helpful to you in terms of what I'm talking about? Are you like connecting the dots, right? Is, is that you started this business because most of you all, you know, I don't want to speak for everybody. I don't know y'all personally, right? But I'm a, I can speak for myself, right? When I jumped into my first business, I was like, you know what? I'm going to build it and by golly, they're going to come because I got the bomb.com idea, right? It's like, I got it and all I got to do is just build it and they'll come and that's all I got to do. And the reality is, is they don't come, <laughs> it, you know, just because you build it, you now need to drive traffic to it, right? You actually have to go out there in front of your ideal client and say, hey, I'm here and I'm ready to do business with you. And I am the person that can do it uniquely better than anybody. That's what you have to do on a consistent basis, right? That is the thing that most entrepreneurs fail at. They fail at being able to get in front of their ideal client and talk to them in a way that stops the scroll and makes them the ideal solution provider when the client is ready to buy. Does that make sense? That is the key that you need to do if you want to be successful in this business, right? And it's not hard to do. It's just a concept that most people don't understand. They believed the crack pipe that people gave us, which is uh, travel sells itself. I don't need to do anything extra. I just need to tell my friends and family I've got travel and boom, I'm going to make, you know, all this money and I'm going to have clients at the wazoo and that's all I need to do. Now, there'll be people who will come in my inbox tomorrow and they'll be like, you know what, I'm doing great with my friends and family referrals and that's great, but that's not normal. Right. Normally, most people cannot make six figures from referrals alone. There's not enough friends and family. There's not enough referrals 
and there's not enough people to pay the prices that I want um, in order to get me to six figures in the travel business, right? So I need strangers. I need a lot of them and I need them consistently. And I prefer, like I got all these stipulations, right? I need strangers that are willing to pay, you know, between $3,500 to $5,000 per trip, right? That love cruises or, you know, that are interested in cruising, right? I got all this criteria, right? That are, you know, in their mid 20, you know, mid thirties, late 40, you know, early forties, whatever my criteria is, right? How do I get that, my message in front of those people that I want to do, right? Consistently so that I can on repeatable know what kind of money I'm going to make based on that, right? I know my metrics so well. I know my conversions that if I do X number of you know, calls. If I do 15 calls a week, I'm going to get, you know, three to four clients out of that because of my conversion is 30%. All right. I know my numbers. Do you know your numbers to get to your goals? We're not going to talk about that today, but that's, that's the kind of system I'm talking about is understand your numbers so well that you understand what it takes for you to hit your goals. And you've got a process to get in front of volume of people on autopilot that allows you to be able to get to those strangers that are your ideal client on a consistent scalable basis so you can hit the goals that you want financially right okay so let's talk about the system last thing we're going to talk about it's a very simple system i uh, was uh working on the webinar a couple weeks ago and i was like you know what i just this is this is i want to make this so simple for everyone the system your client attraction system is as follows the first thing that you need to do in your client attraction system is you need to focus on you right? Everybody says, don't focus on you, but you need to focus on you. What is the thing that you want to specialize in? And it should be something that you're passionate about. So travel in and of itself is not, is a passion, but you need to go a little bit deeper than that. I want you to introspectively look at what it is that you want to learn about when it comes to the travel industry, right? Focus on you. What are your interests? What are the things that you like? Focus on you and develop a niche around that, right? You'll validate that niche to make sure that there's a demand. There's people who are willing to pay for it and people that are willing to go, uh, you know, do trips around it. But focus on you first. That's number one. The number two part of the system is focus on them, right, which is your client. Who is your client that needs that particular area of travel, right, or that area that you want to specialize in? So I'm going to use wedding destinations as an example, right, because it's simple. Everybody gets it right? So you love weddings, then you should probably specialize in weddings. I don't like weddings, so I'm never going to specialize in that, right? Right? And who's your client? Well, people who need, who want to get married in a non-traditional way, right? What are their, what are their problems? What are they, what do they desire, right? You focus on them. That's number two. And then number three is focus on us, right? So focus on you and them in terms of building their relationship. It is not their responsibility to reach out to you. It's your responsibility to get in front of them and build the relationship. Does that make sense, right? So number three is about the two of you, right? How are you getting in front of your ideal client, building a relationship and creating a demand based on their need and you as a solution provider for that need? Does that make sense? So that's a little bit complicated what I said, but the reality is, is just number three is build a relationship, right? Focus on the relationship. Stop focusing on the sale too early in the relationship. You guys are throwing up, you know, three, 5,000 packages to strangers and wondering why they don't want to buy. They don't know you. They don't know nothing about you. They don't, you, you haven't focused on them. You haven't introduced yourself. You haven't told them why you're the bomb.com, why you're the choice provider, why you uniquely can solve their problems. You've not positioned yourself in any way to them, right? So why would they spend three or $5,000 with you? They don't know you. I mean, right? I mean, I wouldn't spend three or $5,000 with somebody. I don't know when I, when I could go to somebody that I do know and spend that money with them, Right. Or and more importantly, the dot coms make themselves positioned as the experts go to people better in their marketing than we're doing. So until you do that, you're not going to be able to stop the scroll. Right. OK, so that's number three. Focus on us. And then the last thing is provide solutions and sell. Right. So it's one thing to build relationships. But if you're not focused on having a sales system. So if you're not focused on them to uh, focus on conversion and having a sales system, 
to convert them into clients, then what you've got is just a bunch of relationships, right? You're in business to do business, so do that business, right? Most of you are not really thinking of yourselves as salespeople. You think of yourselves as order takers and you don't have a sales process, right? You don't have a way to take in requests, evaluate those requests to determine if people are qualified to be your clients, and then position yourself as the go-to person in the sale, and then close the sale. You don't think of yourself as salespeople, so you don't operate that way. So we want you to operate. So that's the last thing, right? So before I stop, does everybody get that process, that system? It's not complicated. I want you, I don't want you guys to think of marketing as a complicated animal that you you know you can't figure out. It's simple. Many of you don't have specialties. Many of you are operating all over the place. You don't know what you want to specialize in. You don't know who your clients are. You're not building relationships and you're not selling. Right? Fix those four things and boom, you're going to have it down, right? So thank you for joining me live. If you catch us in the replay, do not forget to push hashtag replay. I love, love, love having you guys live with me. Any questions, don't forget to put them in the comments and I will talk to you soon. Welcome to Online the Travel Boss TV. I am so glad you are here. I am Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss coach and trainer. I help people passionate about travel launch, market, and grow a profitable travel business. Listen, check out our latest episode below. Be sure to stay tuned for our next release. Hit the notification button for the latest episode delivered right to you. See you soon.